I just want to speak the name of Jesus so every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. Because your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold we sing. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. The Holy Spirit needs somebody here this morning to hear this. We sing, I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety to every soul held captive by depression. And I know there are some here right now struggling with that. I know there are some that have been struggling with that. I know there are some here that know some that are struggling with that. Pray over that. Speak Jesus over that. Amen. Shout Jesus from the mountains and sings Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Every enemy. Jesus from my family. I speak the holy name. Jesus from my family, my new family, brother. Amen. Over every enemy. I speak Jesus. It's our heads. Let's close our eyes this morning. Lord Father, we just want the Holy Spirit to just break through this morning, Lord, as we're just speaking your name in everything, Lord. We're worshiping you, Lord, in everything, Father. Not just in song, Lord, but in our praise, Lord, in our words, Lord. And Lord, laying the groundwork, Lord, as the Holy Spirit goes out with us this morning, Lord, into this wicked world, Lord, and we watch the news and we go to work and we read the paper or the social media, Lord, that we are just worshiping you and everything we put into these eyes and everything we put into this mind, Lord. We give it all to you, Father, as you just anoint your word this morning, Lord, with your power. We speak your name, Jesus. You are our way maker, Lord. You are our miracle worker, Lord. You are our promise keeper, God. You are the light in the darkness, Lord. And we praise your name, Father. Praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. In your name, your blessed name. Amen. Maybe see you this morning, children dismissed at Junior Church. Amen. Holy Spirit wants us to hear someone worship this morning. I am so excited. When am I not excited, right? <laughs> I'm so excited. Worship is such an integral part of our Christian walk. Amen. And there's some Christians at a different stage of that walk. How many, you see a show of hands, how many have been in a job where there was inventory involved? Look around. Okay, with a continued show of hands, how many of you love going inventory? <laughs> You're not wacky. I worked at Sony, uh, I worked at the Sun TV, I mean, I, I worked at places, manufacturing and inventory was a pain. And we have inventory in our lives, you know that, right? When we are doing our grocery shopping, what are we doing? Doing the inventory, right? Now, with the breakers and the guards, we're doing clothing inventory all the time, right? Especially when they're young, right? When kids don't care what they squeeze into, right? Now when they're teenagers, that changes. And there are actually four main types of inventory. Four main types of inventory. Raw materials, right? For the, and there's a lot of hands that went up here, right? Raw materials, so you know what I'm talking about here. Something, when I worked at Sony, we call WIP. W-I-P. Work in process or progress. Process. Then there's the third one, finished goods. And then what we call MRO, maintenance, repair, and operations, right? And each 
component of inventory is essential for making sound in a manufacturing environment, sound financial and production planning choices. But today, we're going to take a look at your worship inventory. We're going to take a close look at your worship inventory this morning. What do we say we worship and what do we show that we worship? That's a question you can answer in your head. What do you say you worship and what do we show that we worship? Look at the person beside you, maybe they have a different answer. If our worship is directed where it should be, then what condition is it in? Amen. So when we have a pure worship of God, a pure worship of God, realize that we are, listen to this, we are the raw material to be molded, willing and able. That's key, isn't it? Willing and able in God's hands. He didn't just create you. He's continuing, right? Because we are a whip. We're a work in process, amen? As we grow in our faith and our love towards Him. The difference between, and here's, here's kind of something I saw here, the difference between manufactured products where we have the raw material, in that order, the work in process, the finished goods, and the MRO, maintenance, repair, and operation, with our work, worship inventory, the MRO comes before the finished goods because the finished goods are when we're in glory. Because right now, we are a work in process and we need sometimes, many times, more often than not, a little bit of maintenance, a little bit of repair. Do we not? Or is that just this crazy pastor of how many of my experiences that? I absolutely, this is, I love getting the glimpses of heaven, don't you? Just little glimpses. And sometimes, you know, like Brother Ed, he's been able, and Brother Andy, he's been able to verbalize, you know, in some way, shape, or form, some glimpses that they get. I absolutely believe that we're going to realize a level of worship from our spirit, and then through our glorified bodies, not necessarily separate, considering the timing of the rapture, all right? A level of worship that is unimaginable. Unimaginable. Because we're still in corrupted bodies, we're still here, right? I mean, heaven's going to be better, we know that. So if heaven, if we already know heaven's going to be better, we at least know that. We also know that we can't comprehend heaven, right? So is it fair to say that we're going to be at a level of worship that is unimaginable in heaven? Amen? I'm going to show up my spot right now because this is so cool. It's so cool to even think of that. But man, we get tastes of it. Tastes of it. Right here, right now. Some of us will realize that after the message today, there's certainly some spiritual maintenance and repair we need in our worship inventory and our worship priorities. And we're going to peek into the pages of God's Word. Amen. And we're going to understand our worship priorities better. We need to. Amen. We need to. So let me ask you, do you feel like you're in a season of your life where you need, as Jim Sambala's title of this book, Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire? You need that right now in the season of your life? You may be sitting here today as a Christian and you need some fresh wind beneath your wings. And as a believer, you're in a season of your life and you need some fresh fire. And many times we can make it out of that, right? And I'm going to show you something here and I want you to understand it's not unusual, okay? Because... There's times that we get to, and you need a touch. We're speaking with it right now. You need a touch from God. Amen? There's going to be some of you that are going like this. Some of you aren't going to do nothing because you're afraid to do anything. If you said that, I would be surprised. We need a touch from God. Or you need God to show up for something. Or you need the joy of your salvation that you had from the beginning. Remember that? Or you need a new level of consecration and intimacy. 
intimacy with your Savior. Man. So let me show you here. We're going to just glimpse at this one. This isn't even our main. But look at 1 Kings 18. Chapter 18, verse 1. And as always, I want to welcome out those that are watching in on streaming this morning. I pray that God's word is blessed. 1 Kings 18, verse 1. There's a whole backstory to all of this, but a lot of you know it. If you don't, it doesn't matter. You're going to see the point. And it came to pass after how many days? Many days that the word of the Lord came to who? Is Elijah an insignificant person in the Bible? Not at all. Pretty significant. Many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Matter of fact, it says three years. In the third year saying, go present yourself to Ahab and I will send rain on the earth. There was a drought. There was a drought. So let me ask, when's the last time you looked in the mirror and saw something supernatural? I'm not talking about you other guys. We see here that even Elijah was in a season of his life that there were many days that separated him from the intimacy and the worship with God. It was leaning into three years, Scripture says. So know that whether it's been three years in your life, three months, 30 years, the word of the Lord is coming to us today and our worship will be reinvigorated, renewed, and everybody's in a different place. Everybody's in a different place. And I'm not Elijah. I'm just a man with a voice. And you know that the word of God is going to be coming to you today. Amen. So with that, do you feel like that your worship is in a state of drought? Do you feel like it's in a state of drought? Kind of dry. You need showers from heaven to just soak in to that soil today. Our primary text we're going to look at here is going to be in John 12, verses 1 through 7. John 12, 1 through 7. We know it well, but let's see what the Holy Spirit wants us to see and how we can renew our worship. Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus was, who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil spider, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. If you had not heard before, back then, at this time, for that oil, that was about a year's worth of wages. Verse 4. But one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, son and son, who would betray him, of course, said, why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box and he used, used to take what was put in it. But Jesus said, let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. For the poor you have with you always. But me, you do not have always. Of course, he's talking in the flesh. And this is interesting. When Judas, the thief, said something. Because he was like, wow, surprised. There's such a waste. Do we see anywhere in Scripture that any of the other disciples spoke up and disagreed? No. There's no disagreements there. So let's talk about worship today because many times, you know, kids down here, they ask, you know, why? Most grown-ups just wonder. Judas asked why and the other disciples witnessing this beautiful act of worship from Mary just wondered. Adults, we don't ever stop asking why. We shouldn't. We just stop asking it out loud. Right? Disciples were asking, 
in a sense of, you know, why waste this costly perfume? Think of the insult to their rabbi, Jesus. I mean, all the things that he's done up to this point. Think of the insult to their rabbi that this accusation represented. They're outright saying it, supporting it, or wondering. I mean, he's a really good teacher. You think Jesus was a really good teacher? He's a great teacher, right? But come on, Jesus, the whole bottle first, you know? Seriously. I had somebody ask me one time, it's been about a year and a half, maybe two years. And some, some churches, they're hand raising churches, right? Doing specific parts of God's word. It's not even going to worship time. You know, we have hands raising here during worship time. You know, sometimes we do, you know, doing God's word. And there's some churches that, yeah, the people in the front row, they're actually standing up when the preaching gets real hard. Did you ever see those churches? They're standing up and, and my response, I kind of, I thought about it a little bit, and it's kind of a direct, indirect response that I told him. I said, well, maybe you should ask them. And then I said, maybe they value the word of God like some sports fans value a touchdown by a bunch of grown men that they don't, they don't know running around in spandex chasing a pigskin talking about fantasy football that doesn't pour anything into your life. But they understand that there's a real God. It's not a fantasy, amen, who has given you grace and mercy and pours into your life with every rising of the sun. But I'm not sure, from their point of view, that's not. We've taken the word worship in modern church culture, right, to describe a genre. It's exactly what we've done. I have my hip hop playlist, or I have my country playlist, or I have my worship playlist. Worship is not a genre. Amen? Worship is not a genre. Worship doesn't start when somebody comes up and grabs a guitar and starts to play as the deer, or any other song, whatever that might be. Worship is not an activity that is to be confined to the activity or the expression of music. We can't confine worship, amen? Worship doesn't start then. And this isn't a marriage conference. JP, recently married. Congratulations, buddy. Good to see you guys back. Have a nice trip. Worship doesn't start when music plays any more than romance doesn't start in the bedroom with our wives, gentlemen. Romance starts when you met her. Romance continues every time you look at her with endearment. Romance continues when you speak to her with utmost respect, like she's the queen of your heart. Yes, I'm feeling guilty, honey. Romance continues when she always knows without a shred of doubt that she is the second priority in your life until physical death do you part because she understands that Christ is first, which is her worship priority as well. Romance doesn't start in the bedroom. Romance is a lifetime with the one that Christ sees as entwined with you to be honored and cherished. Amen. Worship starts when you met your Savior. Oh, is that you my spot again? Worship continues every time you pray and communicate with Christ with endearment. Worship continues when you speak to him and request of him with respect, like he's the king of your heart, amen? Worship continues when Christ always knows without a shred of doubt that he is first priority in your life for all eternity. And we get to do that now, amen? 
Worship doesn't start when the music starts. Worship is a lifetime and an eternity with the one who loved us so much to die on the cross for our sins and give us an eternity to worship Him and enjoy His presence forever in a constant state of worship that not only lifts the only one worthy to be lifted, but in turn gives us a full sense of wholeness and glory surrounded by His presence. We had a lady in the office yesterday and just a Christian sister She's just talking about how she's been trying to counsel with a friend of hers. And she said, just rely on the Lord. He's the only way you can get any peace. And she couldn't have been any more right. She's saying that she's counseling her friend to just, just worship and pray. And I'm like, hey, man, I'm just sitting here listening. You go, girl. I mean, she got it. When we really understand worship, we can understand worship. What is God worth to you all day, every day, through the good, the bad, and the ugly? What is he worth to you? The problem here with the disciples' question in John is that it devalued Mary's act, which in turn, the, hear this, which in turn devalued God's presence. We see that. Maybe the disciples were so exasperated at this extravagance. If I was a disciple, I probably would have been the same way. Exact, exasperated at this extravagant act because they weren't where Mary was at at that moment with their experiences. And sometimes in our life, there's those times where stuff, capital S T U F F, Stuff, right? Is going on, and we just throw up our hands just to say, God, I need you right now. The three significant parts of Mary in the book of John is the death of her brother Lazarus, the raising of Lazarus, and the anointing of Jesus. And if Mary would have had a dump truck load of spiker oil, she would have backed it out, beep, 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 and dumped it on Jesus. Man, this is something with that heart attack. <laughs> that would be freaking out there, right? Mary knew what worship was is the point. She knew. She knew what Jesus was worth to her. Amen? First Corinthians 11, 15, what's this? Says that a woman's Hair is her glory. What was she doing with her hair? Making his feet. What did disciples wear on their feet back then? Where did they walk? Beautiful paved street. Yeah. Sandals. Dirt. Why do you think they washed their feet every time they walked into the house? Here's Mary. Taking her glory, according to scripture, oil all over dirt. She is in her hair being her glory meant nothing to her because of what he was worth to her. Amen. These disciples were judging Mary's worship when they didn't even know her warfare. How many times do we do that? I've done it. I probably had it done to me. You know? Don't judge others' worship when we don't even know their journey. Amen? Man, there's some people in church that is, they're worshiping. They're wor man, they encourage me. You know? They encourage me. There's, you got two different people. A person being encouraged by the worshiper and the other one being like, oh, that guy, oh, that girl. You do. Because you're not understanding where they're at in their warfare, amen? There's some here this morning that came into church or turned on streaming this morning fighting some things. Taking 30 minutes or so to say, God, I need you and I glorify you and I worship you, God. 
The same God that made seas turn into highways. Amen. The same God that made bones turn into armies. Amen. Why do some people throw up their hands in God's house? Because they need Him like they need their next breath. He's their daily bread. He's their portion. He's their friend that sticks closer than a brother. And he's the one you can call 24-7. And he's not on mute. Amen. He's the one who isn't ashamed to be identified with me. He's the one who knows every little dirty secret about us Yet he still loves us beyond our comprehension. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. He loves us like that. He's the one who spilled his blood for me so that I could live a redeemed life of redemption, live in eternity, in a place surrounded by his glory that makes euphoria look like a blip in my consciousness. Why in the world, Christian, would we not be worshiping the one who made us? We were made for him to worship, for us to worship him. Amen? We were made to worship him. That's what we were made for. We weren't made just to be down here and walking around and talking all sports and politics and that's, that's what that's, we have a mission. We have a mission down here, Christian. We do. Exodus 34, 14 says God is a jealous God. Some of us have heard that. Some of, some of you this first time you've heard that. God is a jealous God. Many Christians are worshiping everything else but Him. And yet come to church saying they're worshiping God. Not having their eyes open enough to what they are really Worshiping. You may have heard this, but I thought this fit well. The late great President Ronald Reagan shared a joke at one of the conventions, and he said there was a little boy selling puppies outside the Democrat fundraising convention, yelling out, Buy a Democrat puppy! Buy a Democrat puppy! Two weeks later, the Republicans held a Republican fundraiser, same place, and the same little boy was out there selling the same puppies. Yelling, buy a Republican puppy! Buy a Republican puppy! And the man from the press, who had seen the boy two weeks before, went over to the little boy and said, You were here two weeks ago selling these puppies as Democrats. Why are you here now selling them as Republicans? And the little boy simply responds, Now they got their eyes open. <laughs> Many times we have our eyes. Here's what's hard. When you have a dear friend say to you, your eyes, you're blind. I think that's in me. My arrogance says, no, I'm not. <laughs> My stubbornness says, no, I'm not. I'm not blind. We need to have our eyes open to what our worship priorities must be in this life. Worship of money. Worship of intimacy, worship of alcohol, worship, hear this, worship of ministry. Ooh, yeah. We don't worship ministries, amen? We worship God. He's in charge of those, He leads those, He guides those, but we must be careful, amen? We must be careful. We do not worship in ministry. Most recently, you see worship of technology in different areas. The time that some people spend on social media. Wow, could you imagine? If God can use that time in a powerful ministry somewhere.
worshiping the ministry, amen? It's worshiping the God that's guiding you. So here's Mary saving up this expensive perfume for a special moment, and her eyes were quickly open that now is that special moment. I don't think she planned this, right? How could she? She was saving it up. She didn't have, she, she's not omniscient. God's the only one omniscient, all knowing, right? She knew now is the time to worship. While I can, while I still have Jesus here in the flesh. She knew not to look around to see what everybody else was doing because she knew that he is worthy. And he is the only thing that was worthy. The disciples didn't get it. And they didn't get it. They didn't understand the ways because they didn't understand Mary's response to her experience. Mary knew firsthand the grace of God. And she knew what worthship of Jesus was deserving long after the music was over. From that day forward, we can see a different Mary throughout Scripture because her worship priorities changed that day. Remember when Peter got out on the boat? How many disciples walked on the water? Come on, we're How many? Disciples. One. What are the other slackers doing? Watching. Think there's a point to be made? Do you think Peter had a whole different level of worship after that experience? You bet he did. I always wonder if after the whole drama of that whole the storm and walking water and the ghost was not the ghost of Jesus, if after all of that, if there was any of those disciples that regretted not walking out in that water. Because Peter was a pretty fiery boy. We can see that in the chosen. I mean, watch the chosen. Watch it. Watching it. Check it out. Good. Gives you some good visuals. Shows you that Jesus does have a sense of humor. He does. He made you. <laughs> I'm fine, <talking to> guys. <laughs> when the worship of Jesus is on the highest point of your worship inventory, you will realize your worship is the same anytime, anywhere, under any circumstances, no matter what the tune is for the hour. That's where Mary was at. What a powerful thing for us to see in Scripture and understand. The disciples didn't understand that Mary saw her brother Lazarus die and he was in the tomb for Three and a half ish days, Mary saw Jesus come, asked the stone to be rolled away. Mary saw her brother come forth when Jesus commanded it. Mary has a pretty cool experience with this Jesus. Amen? Yeah. Wow. Mary's spiritual brokenness turned to a level of worship that only the disciples understood when Jesus appeared to the disciples in the upper room. He died on the cross. The, dis the disciples understood how Mary worship now. How could they not? When Jesus appeared to the disciples after his resurrection, and he said in Mark 16, 15 through 16, he said this to you, disciples. That's why we gotta take heed, amen. And he said to us go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And not even a few verses later, Jesus ascends to heaven in front of the disciples, we see in Mark 16 20, and they went out and preached 
everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. And there were miracles. So I always wondered if any of the disciples reflected back to that time that they witnessed Mary throwing her glory, her hair, at Jesus' feet and worshiping in a way that at that point in time they really didn't understand. Put yourself in the upper room, guys. Put yourself right there before Jesus ascended. Again, it's a nonfiction book. Amen? It's a nonfiction book. It's just real stuff. If you claim the name of Christ and you are a Christian, that's our call. When it says go preach, it doesn't mean get it, get it ordained, you come up here and you get it. It means you let me tell you about my Jesus. That's what it means. Be bold. Mary wasn't looking around, worrying about what any of the disciples were thinking about her. I'm sure women back then too really cared for their hair in special ways like they do now. It's their glory. It's a covering. But she knew. She knew what Christ was worth. So that's my challenge. That's my challenge to every single one of you this morning that are here. Every single one of you this morning that are watching on streaming. That's my challenge. To take a look at your worship inventory. What's top? I pointed this out before. It's kind of a cool way to think about it in your mind's eye. If we was to take a week and get a time, you know, Monday, well, Sunday through Sunday, and then the times, and then you write down every detail, what you sleep, even what you eat, all needs God's temple. Every single thing that you do, you're going to write down the times. How much time was you at work? How much time was you with your loved ones? How much time was you in God's Word? How much time was you, you know, playing? How much time was you at the gym? How, how much time? And then we take and extrapolate that out. Make a graph. Well, Brother Jerry, you're going to make graphs, right? <laughs> make a graph. What was the first thing that bubbled up on that time graph? Of what we see. This is legit. In your mind's eye, right? Very convicting. It's convicting for me. Very convicting. What changes do we need to make? Now, yes, we need to live life. I'm not saying stop parking, you're just gonna 24-7 be crying. No. It's, we, Jesus is a realistic God, amen. We live life, but you know, I my brother I remember brother Jeff Garn waking you up, brother. Hey, hey, we when I first met him and we talked, you know, about some things, one thing that kind of bothered him, I'm gonna paraphrase a little bit, brother, okay? Is you know when he's at work, he's just he's working. He's working hard. Working harder, brother. He's working hard. And he was having a hard time associating like what does all this hard work have to do with God? It has everything to do with God. You have that job. You provide for your family, my friend. You have a mind that as you're doing that, you're focused on your job and not cutting your digits off. You are focused on God throughout the whole time. Different ways to be smart about it. I said, you're not going to put, you're stop and pray when you got a knife coming at you or whatever. <laughs> so I know you have some crazy things you deal with. Okay? But every single thing we do, we purpose our worship inventory to have God at a level that he is number one. And my spouse understands that he's number one and she's number two. As hard as that is for me to say, because I love her so much, but I understand that God is her number one and I'm her number two. And that's how God will bless a marriage, Brother JP. Amen? It's how we bless a marriage. Got a few newly married-ish couples in here. <laughs> okay? Let's stand this morning.
we just think about the song I brought at the beginning, I Speak Jesus. It says everything about what, where our worship inventory is at, what it looks like, what it looks like to Him. Every single person in here has a really good idea of the top three things that you can honestly, truthfully say that is at the top of your worship. And I'm not going to ask you what those are. You and the Holy Spirit deal with that. Do you feel like that you have Jesus somewhere in the top three? Sorry, you should be in the top one. I'm not kidding. I'm not giving you a pass on the top three. He's got to be number one. What's really cool, what's really cool is if Jesus, if the worship of God is number one in all that we do, you're going to watch all these other things that do have some level that could be construed as worship. You're going to, you're going to watch your finances being blessed in one way, shape, or form. You'll be able to tithe, right? You're going to watch your relationships being blessed. You're going to watch certain things being blessed. Yes, trials are going to come along the way. They do. We don't pray for trials. They come. Right? They just come. But they strengthen us. They strengthen us. And that's the good, the bad, and the ugly. How much testing do we see in God's Word with many of the characters? A lot of testing. And that testing is kind of like that, that clay going into the fire. Heart strengthens it. It makes it better. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes this morning. What do you need to say to your Lord Savior right now about where your worship has been? You need to apologize. Do you need to commit something to him right now with your worship? Is there something that you are... This is the Holy Spirit right now. Is the Holy Spirit convicting you of something right now that you have any position of worship that you absolutely know shouldn't be there? And that conviction is because you have the anointing of the Holy Spirit and you've asked the Lord in your life, but we can still mess up when we have the Lord in our life. But the Holy Spirit gives that conviction to guide us to get us on the right path. So let me encourage you right now to give it to the Lord. What a good time to do it when the Holy Spirit is moving through His Word like this today. If you need to come to the altar, it's always open. You can leave it all laid up here before the Lord. That's even a form of worship. Humility. Father God, we just ask that you break our hearts for what breaks yours, Lord. That we get our priorities straight and that you are at the top of the list. Father, for those that are in here today that do not have you as their priority, let today be the day that they move you to the top of the list. If there be one that does no salvation, let today be the day of their salvation. Father, I just thank you for the message today. Thank you for the hearts that were touched. Lord, just give those hearts the boldness throughout this week to draw even closer to you. I ask now as we leave this place that you watch us, you guide us, and you direct our every footstep. We give this week and commit it solely to you. In your name, amen. Have a wonderful week in our men's room, tomorrow night, 6.30.